Hello. A woman who stabbed her two daughters to death as they slept in their beds has today been convicted of murder. The murder trial at Cambridge Crown Court hinged on the mental state of Rekha Kumari Baker, the girl's mother. Her defence was that she was mentally ill and not responsible for her actions. She admitted killing the girls but claimed it was manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility. The prosecution said she carried out the frenzied stabbings at the family home in Streatham near Ely in order to wreak havoc on her ex-husband's life. In another remarkable aspect of this trial, the jury took just 35 minutes to reach its unanimous verdicts. Kamari Baker was found guilty of murder on both charges. She'll be sentenced tomorrow. This report is from our Home Affairs correspondent, Sally Chidzoy. A police mugshot released this afternoon of the mother who planned the violent execution of her two young daughters, two days after she bought a knife block from the Asda store in Cambridge. A mother who the prosecution described as having a vicious, nasty streak in her, a mother so calculating and controlling that she set a trap for Davina and Jasmine so that she could kill them. When police arrived at her home in Streatham, they found the girls' bodies in their bedrooms. The jury at Cambridge Crown Court were told that Rekha Kamari Baker woke at 2.30 in the morning, lay awake, and then 45 minutes later went downstairs to fetch two knives from the kitchen. Walking in darkness and in her nightdress, she first entered Davina's room and stabbed her 39 times. Davina woke and tried to protect herself. Then the mother moved to Jasmine's room and stabbed her 29 times. Kamari Baker was bitter over the breakdown of her marriage to David Baker. She was angry at the failure of her new relationship. The former waitress had fallen out with her employer and with her friends. Mother and daughters may have lived in this house, but many around here say they were so quiet that they didn't know the house was occupied. Kamari Baker's heart wasn't in her new home. She'd barely unpacked and had chosen instead to live out of boxes. Her relationship with her eldest daughter was becoming increasingly strained. And Kamari Baker was growing frustrated with the way her own life was turning out. She was growing into a very angry woman. The court heard that after killing her daughters, Kamari Baker showered, put on moisturiser and changed. She went out for petrol and left two notes. One of them read, sorry doesn't mean anything now. I killed my two beautiful daughters. She had set a trap for Davina and Jasmine. To stop them staying with her former husband, she offered them a trip to a shopping centre and planned to murder them after that, but put it off after Davina sent her a text thanking her for the trip, telling her she loved her mother with all her heart. Kamari Baker planned a second identical trip the next day and then killed them. Today, the jury were out for just 35 minutes. They found her guilty of murdering her two daughters. Minutes later, the girl's father emerged. His brother spoke on his behalf. I was robbed of my daughters by an act of calculated viciousness by a woman who, having given life to them in her vindictive mind, believed she also had a right to take that life away. She will now pay the price for this. I take comfort in the knowledge that I will in time be with my girls again. She will not. Well, I don't think anyone will ever know uh, why she did what she did. It's not necessarily the case that women aren't capable of committing very serious and um, vicious acts out of anger and hate, um, and I think uh, the jury saw that. Witnessed by a teacher, Kamari Baker had told her daughter, Davina, that she wished she were dead. Psychiatrists said she was not mentally abnormal. No one, including the police, could get inside her mind. Rekha, Kamari Baker had set out to murder her children. It's clear that, that Rekha is the only one who knows why that has happened uh, and to date hasn't given us a reason. Kamari Baker will be sentenced to life tomorrow. Sally Chidzoy, BBC Look East, Cambridge. A dinner lady from Essex was sacked today after telling some parents that their daughter was being bullied at school. A letter of dismissal was hand-delivered to Carol Hill's home this morning. It follows a disciplinary hearing last week. The school at Great Tay near Colchester claims that Mrs Hill broke a confidentiality rule by going directly to the father. He's since removed his children from the school and says he and other parents support Mrs Hill. Carol Hills waited nearly three months to find out her fate. The letter telling her she's been dismissed arrived this morning. She was suspended in June after telling the parents of seven-year-old Chloe David how sorry she was their daughter had been tied up and hit in the playground. The case caused outcry, prompting hundreds of messages of support on the internet. Today, Carol's husband has described how much the ordeal has affected her. She's not been eating, just been down really, not very happy at all.
I can't believe it's got this far. Don't it have anybody to go to, to help her? Um, she just done nothing wrong. Seen here on Friday at Carol's disciplinary hearing, Chloe's father, Scott David, told Lakeist he's withdrawn both his children from the school. Her first tape policy says she can talk to us about what happens during the school day. But still, we're here today as if she's a criminal. Other parents at the school are now considering their children's future and are outraged at the way Carol Hill's been treated. I just feel it'd be really sad to take them out, but unfortunately I think it may come to that at the end of the day, and I know there are several other parents that are feeling the same. And this afternoon there were mixed views at the school gates. Most parents are feeling that the whole thing has been really out of proportion um, and that it's a shame that the press were involved right from the beginning and it's just left a sort of bad taste in everyone's mouths, really. So I think from the way things were going, that was a foregone conclusion. Um, I think that the way the whole thing has been dealt with is totally outrageous. <laughs> Carol's plight has now been taken to the MP Bernard Jenkin, who says he's extremely concerned. She now has ten days to appeal the decision. Felicity Simper, BBC Look East, Great Day. Well, neither the school head teacher nor Essex County Council were prepared to give an interview to Look East. In a statement, they said, The school's priority remains providing the best possible education to all our pupils and ensuring their development and well-being. Well, Jeanette Wheeler is an employment lawyer from Norwich. She's with me now. Uh, Jeanette, this seems, on the face of it, very harsh. I agree. I think it is from a moral perspective. Most people would say, well, you know, everyone has a duty to protect the welfare of children, and, and it seems that this dinner lady was trying to do exactly that. But from a legal point of view, an employment law point of view, um, there is an implied duty into every contract of employment of confidentiality. That protects information that is clearly highly confidential. So the question becomes, was this information that really was highly confidential, did it have that characteristic? And uh, I'm not entirely sure uh, of all the facts of the case, so it may be that there are other issues involved which would make this perhaps more, more uh, likely that they could justify dismissing than it seems on the face of it. If this does continue and she does appeal and maybe even gets to industrial tribunal, um, d does the, the situation change? Do you think she'd have quite a strong chance if it got that far? Yeah. I mean, I think you have to look at all the facts of the case, and that's totally what a tribunal judge will do. They will look at all of the facts, and there may well be that there are some policies and procedures which the school has which make quite clear that any issue like this must be reported directly to the head. And if she has disobeyed those rules and instructions, then you can understand that they may be justified. But on the face of it, if it is simply a matter of her speaking to the father uh, rather than the head and the head didn't really like it, uh, then it, it, you know, it may well be that she would have a strong case, but it will depend on all the other factors. And what about the fact that we obviously see that she's got a lot of support from other parents? Does mm -hmm. that have any sway or is it really just down to the law? Well, it's just down to the law. I mean, the tribunal won't be interested in what everybody else thinks. The tribunal judge will look at the legal facts of the case. Of course, the school might be influenced when it hears the appeal that there is strong support, and they may obviously review their, their decision in the light of that, so there may be some moral pressure brought upon the school as a result, and she can only hope that that does help her in her cause. Jeanette Wheeler, thank you very much. Thank you. There's lots more to come on Look East, including a special...